So I read your bio and you've had some amazing adventures in both in life and academia. What part of this journey is most apparent in the creation, direction and performance in I'm Fine? Thanks for asking. I'm Fine Thanks for Asking, I think is a culmination of all of my experiences. There's like, there's just no way around it. So like the way it was made was by my friends at USC. So my whole USC experience and those relationships that were built there. The character Danny dealing with um, having to protect her daughter from um, houselessness in this, in this transition. I grew up as a pastor's daughter. Um, so in my household, we never ha just had the nucleus family of my parents and, and me and my sibling. never. There was always somebody who I didn't know at the time was houseless. Like I, I learned all that terminology. It's like, they're not necessarily homeless. They're just, they're just that one paycheck away or that, that just, that they just need that couch to sleep on for a little bit so they could just get right back on their feet. And my mom and dad as a, you know, a pastor and pastor's wife, I grew up around that. And so I, I was able to pull on some of the people that I've seen in my life growing up who were Danny. It's just funny, as I'm talking to you about it, I'm not realizing how much of that's in the story because we didn't write that based off of this. As filmmakers and storytellers, the things that you experience in life are naturally going to come into the stories. And just by you asking that question, I'm I'm realizing there was a male Danny in my life when I was like six or seven years old. And, and Michael was the little Wesley, my little best friend, you know, like I loved them. And he had that same positive disposition. So yeah, there's no way around it. Plus my roller skating, um, having to go to school, um, my, I threw tantrums, major tantrums. I did not want to be woken up. Um, and the only way my mom could get me to go to school without throwing a fit was she would tell me, um, we'll roller skate to school. So I, that's, so roller skating has always been a big part of my life and it's been my joy. So even so when I was working with my, my teammates, that was just naturally one of the things that um, they knew I could do. And so when we were talking about forms of transportation for Danny, it, it, with COVID, obviously we still couldn't, we couldn't get, have uh, the actors in and off of buses and right. in and out of Ubers. And so, you know, it was brought up like, oh, these could be her means of transportation around the city, you know? And so we just pulled on all the resources, anything That's, that we could do. <laughs> as a director, you need specific performing to tell your story. Since you were also an actor, how did you get the performance you wanted from child actor Wesley Moss through your relationship with her in playing her mother? With Wesley, she's, she's eight years old, but she is so beyond mature and her mom was with us and the studio teachers on set and like um we would run things by like what can we say to her how much information can she know but she like before we even told this girl what the story was about she was like so are we are we homeless because <laughs> <laughs> she'd read sure, I, was like, I was like i had real adult like conversations with what like she was my partner wow. this little girl is phenomenal and see we had to keep the set small so we had to um we couldn't have more than 10 people on set at a time because we were right. trying to be very COVID safe. And that's why we, a lot of us had to act in the movie. There's a lot of crew members that are in the movie. And then including with Wesley, we had to keep it tight in the family. We couldn't cast. So Wesley is a family friend who ever since she was a little girl, they've always kid that she looks more like my daughter than theirs. <laughs> and so, so when I asked, it, um, it, it just was not, we, we just get along so well. And she just, whenever it was a Wesley day, I just was so relaxed because I knew she was going to have her lines. I knew she thought about her lines. <laughs> I knew that she, wow. she came with ideas. It's brilliant. She made it easy. I wish I could take credit for her, but I cannot. In many ways, yours is one of the first films to address the pandemic directly. We can almost assume that Danny's troubles are due to the circumstances of what she has lost as a result. Besides the mask, what are the stakes of the pandemic for the universe of your film? Okay, first of all, it's hard <laughs> as filmmakers to make a film during the pandemic and yes. the lockdown. Yes. Let's start there. 
So then after that, you got to think about the longevity of your film. Is, is everyone going to label this a pandemic film and then it's going to like get, you know, washed away and all sort of stuff. And then we had to think, well, listen, whoever wants to do that, they can. And that's true. It's obviously we have masks and things like that. But when you look at the core of the story, the story is about a mother who is trying to do her best by her daughter and keep them safe and protect her innocence. That is is a universal story that can last forever. We need to embrace it, but we don't need to pound people over the head like we're in a pandemic, we're in a pandemic. We're... We all wake up every day, we know we're in a pandemic. It's an everyday thing now. So we wanted to make sure we didn't highlight it. It just was the world that they're in. And that majorly was due to the limitations of um, it being an indie film and us having to guerrilla it. So we had to embrace it. Um, also safety yeah. of our crew. And I, although we did uh, test frequently and we always tried to make sure everything was safe and it was, thank God. But there was just many layers that made it, resulted in us having to do that. But we did make a conscious effort not to re have to remind everyone, this is a pandemic. We know, right. we, yeah. all, we right. all know. We know. <laughs> That's it. Um, the character of Danny is very carefully drawn. How did you develop her specific look and attitude towards the world she's facing? Why, for example, did you want to keep her attractive despite her circumstance and desperation? Um, okay, so we knew that we this subject matter is a very heavy subject matter. And we wanted to do our best to make the journey more palatable for wow. it for anyone who's watching it. Um, it's like Trojan horsing information that is necessary and things that we need to talk about, but through entertainment. We wanted her to feel like a Cali girl. Like um, <laughs> we wanted to, we, we were like throwing back to that 90s nostalgia, but her colors are intentional. The brightness, what she's wearing is that 90s nostalgia, the biker shorts. And she did that just to try to keep her daughter um, happy. And uh, cause you know, Wesley picked out her outfit and um, just wanted to match with her mom and like have that fun. So we were just trying to do our best to keep a, what could be a heavier subject matter, light and fun and more palatable. So one of your most stunning underlying issues is the treatment of women at certain socioeconomic levels and how they can be easily preyed upon by certain men. What do you think can be done for those hashtag me too victims who have less of a voice and may have to depend on their economic situation? I, I think that right now, just bringing more awareness to um, women's voices and, and, and um, issues or, or traumatic things that may have happened. And, and finally listening and, and, um, and cause a lot of uh, people who are um, survivors or, or whatever it may be often feel judged or not heard. And so I think that the, the movements like this are helping people to have more voice. Society in general is, just the beginning. There's a lot of work that needs to be done sure. with these things. Like the first thing is to listen and to hear. And that's right. what we're doing. <laughs> I knew you would be like this. I knew you'd be <laughs> this amazing well of perspective. This is Patrick McDonald for HollywoodChicago.com. Copyright 2021.